Hi, I'm Phil Constantine. On this episode of Travels with Phil, we're going to the ancient Mayan site of Yaxilan in Mexico. So let's see where it is. You can see it over toward the right-hand side underneath Palenque and north of Copan. I'm based out of San Diego, so let's see what it would be like to go down there all the way down through Mexico right on to the border with Guatemala or Guatemala if you prefer. It's on the Usuma Cinta River and it's right on the edge of the river. You have to go all the way through. You can't get there by car. You have to go all the way through to boats from Frontera Corozal or Echevarria. And those boats, you know, they remind me a little bit of the uh, Jungle Cruise boats at Disneyland. Long and narrow. You can see maybe uh, 10 people on there. And this is the river itself. Now it varies. Sometimes it's shallow. Sometimes it's uh, very heavy because of the rains up the slope. And this is what it looks like as you come in close. And literally the, the uh, site, Yaxilan, is right on the edge of the river itself. Now this is what it looked like uh, maybe a hundred years ago in a drawing there. This is what the boats look like as they come up now. And this area was uh, settled between 250 to about 900 in the common era. And this is what the sign looks like coming up the slope just off from the boats. And this is definitely in the jungle. There's lots of animals around here. They used to worry about the uh, panthers a long time ago. This is what it looks like as you come up the trail coming into the first site and then you head into structure 19 which is the labyrinth or at least that's what they call it. I like the signs out there you see them in Spanish, Mayan and in English. Now this is coming inside the labyrinth and you'll see that there are no lights in here and it comes back and forth. Now this is what's called a tailless whip scorpion. Now allegedly it doesn't bite and it's not poisonous, but it's almost as big as your hand. So this is a bit scary for some folks. Now, you can go around the building, but it's a little bit uh, inconvenient to do so. So coming through it is, is part of the fun, actually. The excitement of the trip doesn't make it, it makes it seem like a sort of an Indiana Jones kind of excursion. Now, these are some of the bats that hang out there. And, uh, in fact, you can see this one start to move around a little bit as the lights uh, disturb it just a bit. They're used to it being dark in there all the time. This is one of the spots where they have not added extra lights. And coming out, uh, you can see this is the Building 19 or the Labyrinth from the outside in the Grand Plaza area. And this is the Grand Plaza looking off in toward the uh, distance out there. And you can see, moving around a little bit here, some quick shots in the area. Coming up into some of the, uh, there's three sections out there. Uh, one of them is called the Acropolis, or the Acropolis. And uh, there's several of them, actually. Uh, there's three major groups of buildings out there. Now, these uh, the buildings varied over a period of time. Uh, the uh, primary uh, greatest peak of influence for Yaxilan was in the 600, the late 600s to the mid-700s. Its rivals were Piedras Negras, Tikal, and Palenque at various times. And it's mainly known, uh, its, its biggest archaeological outstanding feature are the lintels, which are over the doorways. And I'll show you a bunch of those in just a bit. Now, the modern name of Yaxilan means green stones. You can see from all the moss and algae that's growing up around it. In various times, it's been called uh, Pachan, Broken Sky, Cleft Sky, Laura Large City, which was named after a, a European explorer and Menche. And now some of these uh, areas out here, they actually think there may have been a bridge going across a river that was over 100 meters long. And if they, uh, if it's as long as they think it might have been, this would have been the longest bridge in the world, suspension bridge, until about the 1300s. Looking up towards Structure 33, there you can see it right up there. Now this is an old picture of Structure 33. And one of what I like about this particular building, you'll see at the bottom down there, there's a bunch of uh, steps. Well, these are, uh, they tell a story, basically. And it, you go from left to right, and you can see all kinds of engravings down here. And some people say these are dwarves. Some people say it's uh, twin gods playing a game of, uh, basically, a soccer or football, as they would call it there. And these are the dwarves, you know, a really good picture of it. Now, as you come inside Building 33, you can see these statues. Now, somebody, they think uh, one of the uh, guys that came through, uh, uh, Mahler, came through in about 1900, he thinks that woodcutters came up here and tried to loot the site, and they chopped off the head off of that statue, and it was too heavy to carry. 
So they just put it right back where it was or put it over in the next little alcove. But there's lots of little alcoves, lots of sculptures, lots of drawings. But let's look at the lintels. The lintel is the piece that goes over the doorway that keeps the uh, bricks above the roof from coming down. And this is what it looks like. Now, this place is just well, well known for having these ornately carved stone lintels. In fact, a lot of them, unfortunately, were taken away and uh, sit in the British Museum. Some of them are still on the site, but this is number 24. And this is uh, the uh, Premier King and his wife. She was pulling a uh, uh, strap through her tongue for a ritual bloodletting. That was uh, one of the things that the uh, kings and queens had to do there, or the lords and ladies, as they were sometimes called. Now, there's... Uh, quite a few lentils. There's, you know, I think 50 to 100 different lentils out there. These are just some of the ones that you can see. Some of them are taken uh, pictures for, at sites. Some of them are in museums. Uh, this is what they look like. Now, this is some of the hieroglyphics or the glyphics that the Mayans did. And you can see these are very deeply, deeply carved, some of these. And that's what makes them so very impressive is that they're quite large, some of them. And the detail work that went into them was just absolutely amazing. In fact, uh, some folks will say these are the best carvings of all the Maya and Mesoamerica sites of the various uh, different groups, be it Aztec, Maya, Olmec, or whatever. Now, this is a, uh, there's a group right there of several of them as you come up. Now, also, there are stela or stele, and these are the vertically standing monuments. Now, here you can see the uh, one of them that is very, very large laying on the ground. And these are all over the area outside. Now, some of them have also been removed. Some of them have fallen down and broken over the years. Uh, but this area has, does not see a lot of tourists, uh, and that's one of the reasons why it's survived a little bit better than some of the other spots. This is one where it actually, you can see a mirror there on the right-hand side, which shows you the back of it. Now, outside, they have a ball court, uh, which is fairly typical for the uh, Maya sites. And then I'll take you around some of the structures out here. This is some of the large faces outside of Structure 6, Structure 16, 17. There's just there's so many buildings out there. Uh, I think it comes up around 50-some-odd buildings as well. Well, varying styles, varying shapes. Uh, that's an old picture of Structure 25, and this is a more modern day uh, picture of it. Now, this is number 30 old, and this is what it looks like now after they've done some uh, work clearing away all the stuff. What else do they have out there? They have animals. That sound you hear? No, it's not monsters, it's howler monkeys. Yes, this definitely adds to the uh, Indiana Jones search for uh, the Lost Mines, Solomon's Lost Mines kind of feeling. Yes, indeed, this is really a jungle. It's also a rainforest. Yeah, the jaguars used to be an issue out there when it was originally uh, being discovered by Europeans. Now, coming up is a picture of that bridge that allegedly went across the river. Some archaeologists uh, archaeologists believe it was there. Others don't really know, but that's what they think it might have possibly looked like. Now, when I came out there, I came over from Bonapaka State in a, a Mayan, very tiny Mayan village. That was their bunkhouse. And these are the Lancondones, and that's a, a traditional dress, and they still dress like that in many areas. This is the little stream behind the village where I stayed. In fact, I got a little bitty video. And so I, I went from uh, Palenque all the way over to T. Cal through there. And so when I left the area, I came back up the river on one of the boats all the way up. It's 45 minutes to the site. And then it took another hour and a half to go from the main town or the little town out there up to Guatemala. I want to thank all the folks who allowed me to use their videos and the pictures as well. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please feel free to make comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And if you like this video, please click on the thumbs up button below. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the circle with my picture in it in the lower right hand corner of the video. The arrow is pointing at it now. And once you have subscribed, you can be notified of when I have a new video posted by clicking on the bell icon in the description field below the video. Thanks again for watching.